Hello, 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 all our educator friends. What is up? What is up? It is that time of the week again. It is time for Sit Me What's Up Wednesdays. Corey Camp, how are you feeling today? Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. It's sunny, uh, a little chilly outside here, but the sun's shining. So um, I prefer that over, you know, Ohio has a few more cloudy days than I would prefer, um, but I do get the four seasons. I didn't get that back in Texas. So no, all is good here. Um, online learning is in full force this week with my kiddos and uh, they have been uh, doing some really cool units in their in their social studies as, of course, you know, it's election year and election week. And so um, it's been it's been a good week this week in the in our household is where our kids are actively learning and connecting to real world events, which I, I as a teacher, I love. So, yeah, that's that's about it. How about you, it's Kyle? Well, you, you mentioned the, the, the change of the weather, the four seasons. As you can see, y'all, I, I have my sweater. I'm actually here in Texas. As yeah, soon as yeah. it drops below 70 degrees, I don't know. I just, I just went and grabbed mm -hmm. my sweater, y'all, because, you know, we're, we're Texans here. So we only get we only get really two two seasons down here in Texas. Either it's hot or, or, or hotter or not hotter, whatever it's what you want to call it. But it is an exciting time, especially, you know, with uh, the election happening, especially with the kids being able to actually – you know, it's an important time of our history to be able to learn that and, and you know, carry that on. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's what's happening here, Corey. Uh, you know, we're just you know, we're trying I, to keep it kosher. Now that you said that about sweater weather uh, and in and, and Texas, I now know why I have, I've developed quite a problem, y'all. I have over 46, don't tell my husband, over 46 sweaters in my closet right now. And I'm still looking daily whenever I get those ads for deals like at the loft or wherever I, you know, shop, I'm like, ooh, a new sweater. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of obsessed with those right now. So. Yeah. Uh, I just have sweaters just from Christmas gift. It's always easy to give a guy a sweater, I guess. You know, a Christmas gift, go get him a sweater. Go get Perfect. him a sweater. Maybe so I, I should start buying sweaters for others instead of myself. Maybe that's what I should do. <laughs> you can't go wrong with a the sweater. There you go. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, um, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that are up and coming here at Sydney and then get on to the main event for today. But I'm really excited. We uh, Last time we had our guest on, he was here to talk to us a little bit about the goals feature. And uh, we've been talking a lot about some unique ways that our customers have taken this feature, which was a, an idea that was kind of stemmed from customer feedback and our customer wish list. And they have completely, they, they are not putting it in a box. They are using it in really innovative ways. On next week on the 12th at 12 Central, you can join us for a webinar with uh, Janice Gale and Vanessa from the Houston ISD Career Pathways Program to hear how they are using this as their e-portfolio platform now um, using our goals feature. So the webinar is going to be great. They've really focused on don't just tell me about the amazing things that are happening or the progress that you've made or the, the things you've been doing and creating show me. So they're using that goals feature and all the other spaces inside Sydney as a way to kind of create these e-portfolios and share and support their teachers in that career pathways program. So super excited. You can register. I know our team's going to add the link in the comments below. Check that one out. It's going to be a really good one. Definitely. I think, and I'm, I'm always amazed to see how, you know, have that customer wish list and, and actually it's a great segue almost to our, our our special guest today once we bring it in but creating a customer wish list and be able to really bring the needs that you know the educators instructional coaches new teacher mentorship all the departments need to be successful and be able to create that that uh that content creating that evidence for for success yeah definitely definitely so that's going to be a really good one i'm excited to see how they're i've been talking with a lot of folks about using uh goals as that portfolio a lot of our higher eds are looking at that mm -hmm. as their students are creating uh, these portfolios that they can then use when they get to the assessment period of their um, preparation program. So really excited to see how they're using that. 
Uh, also, just a reminder, you can still access our blended learning and remote classrooms webinar with uh, Juliana Finnegan, and uh, that's available on demand in our learning center. Okay, so let's go on to bringing our guest in for today. I'm super excited. We've talked with y'all about screen recording, but we've got a few really exciting updates, again, from customer wish lists, from customer feedback. So uh, Jeff Ritter, our Chief Information Officer, is here to tell us what's new with screen recording. Welcome, Jeff. Good morning, guys. How are y'all? Good, great, good. Great. How many cups of coffee have you had yet this morning? Hey, I'm not a coffee guy. <laughs> I've been drinking water and that's good for me. Kyle, <sighs> you did a great job. You brought the energy from the very beginning. I was, <laughs> I was pumped. I was ready to come out from behind the curtain. Hey, hey you know, hey, this, this is this off, only off one cup, one cup of coffee. You're, you're doing good. And, you're doing you know, good. maybe I can get some of that, This maybe a spring water that, that's, that you're drinking, some of those minerals to, to keep you energized. <laughs> to keep you I do up. need to drink more water. That is something I do need to do. But. Well, I'm probably I'm probably running on a little bit of adrenaline because I stayed up late watching election results last night. Mm -hmm. I yeah. couldn't I couldn't turn it off. Um, and then I got this morning. It was the exact same position we were at, <laughs> at one thirty yeah. when I went to bed. I was like, okay, this is going to go long. Yeah, it's uh, going to be a, it's going to be a long one. I've got the updates going on my Facebook as well, and my kids are asking me, which again yeah. I, just, I love. I love that they're yeah. asking those questions. Yeah, I had and... some great conversations with Jack yesterday as we sat and started watching it because you know at six o'clock, you know everything closes on the East Coast. So mm -hmm. Jack and I were sitting there watching the early, and I was explaining what was going on and. He's in sixth grade, and so it's perfect time for him. And as I was kept telling, this is historical. Like this is going to be a yeah. really wild and crazy ride. And so he got up this morning and said, "So did anything change?" I go, "No." Nope. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, okay. yeah. So well, so my my fifth grader Brian has uh, found this game called Win the White House. Has Jack experienced that? No. no. One of the teachers in our district is doing it with some of the in person kids, and so his friend showed. Uh, him this app and then he emailed the teacher last night and was like hey I found this game it's really cool so you get to uh, you know build a candidate avatar and decide which party you're under and you do the whole campaign trail and you're against a, wow. the the bot com campaign and anyway so um he he very much had a good understanding of which states he needed to make sure he won so he had enough votes and wow. he, he won the presidency once last night he played it three times as we were kind of watching through and lost twice and so he's like i've got to work on my campaign <laughs> so, i love That's it i was good. like man i where was that whenever <laughs> I was I know I yeah I I just I just had the Oregon about, Trail you know, how the different votes the, work and all of that the Oregon Trail yeah exactly that's exactly Oregon what trail. I said I, I was like man I just had the Oregon Trail there you that go. in we're we're, we're 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 showing our age when we start talking about floppy disk <laughs> and Oregon right. Trail so I'm sure that's Oregon right. Trail is still available somewhere online <laughs> in a in a mod so. But, oh well. All right. Well, well, Jeff, tell us a little bit about uh, the screen recording feature. I'd love for us just to start with a, a general recap of this feature. Where do people find it within the Sydney mm -hmm. app, just in case mm -hmm. they haven't used it yet, haven't yep. discovered it? And then what's new with it? Yep. So, you know, Kyle, you um, totally uh, nailed it on the head uh, with regard to how we're trying to really listen to our customers and take our enhancement requests and try to get them into the into the platform because this was our number one request um, uh, up until when we started working on it. So in the spring, it was the number one request. And so we really decided to go after it. Um, people wanted a Screencastify replacement within the app so that they could do their own recordings of themselves doing PD or showing something off or recording a Zoom call for, for uh, a posterity state but not being in uh, the Zoom call. And so uh, we, we went after it and um, it's, it's a great tool um, to use. So, you know, if you if you look over here, I'm in my workspace, which is, of course, where we talk about where you probably want to put it unless you you have a really strong huddle that you feel comfortable just dumping in the raw stuff. This is where you can curate it. You can trim it. You can do all kinds of things with it. And it's just a new feature under the plus button. And we've got this the record screen here. You see it's still in beta. Um, because we're still improving it. We're still finding out um, how teachers are using it in need. We had a, a big improvement that we'll get to in a minute, Corey, that uh, really saved us um, because we really had missed the mark a little bit. Um, but uh, it's right there. Um, and so if I hit it, um, it's going to bring up 
um, my screen record screen right there. Um, and interesting, it is using my camera and I'm using it in a vidyard too. So that's a weird one. Um, you know, so the, the cool thing about it is um, you can either have your, your camera showing you in the little box in the, in the corner, or you can do it without. Um, and, you know, if you're doing that Zoom call or you're doing something with a Google Meets or a Google uh, a Microsoft Teams, you're going to want to not use your camera within us because you're going to use your camera within your, your video conferencing. Um, and we also give you, like all the other video conferencing software, you can select which microphone you're going to use as well. So um, that's the basics on where it is. And you can see my camera showing me as what I would appear in my little box right there. Yeah, and I, I, you mentioned a few ways that folks are using this. Um, and really, we've got people all across the campuses and the organization you, starting to use this feature. Some have not found a screen recording feature that they're in love with yet. Um, either some of those are too complicated or um, the one of the biggest issues that uh, many of our teachers are having right now is when they create content, video content, flip lessons, um, anything for their, their virtual classrooms and their online students, that content is because the raw file is so big, it takes forever for it to upload into mm -hmm. Google Classroom or Schoology, or they're having to upload it to YouTube, which also takes a long time because the file is so large. When you're uploading it to those spaces, that file has to be compressed and processed and web optimized. Well, because you can do this inside Sydney on the mobile or the web app, so that's something I wanna make sure that we mm -hmm. mention is screen recording, happens anywhere you can log into your Sydney account, on a desktop, on a laptop, on a mobile device, a tablet, you can use the screen recording feature. But um, we have people who are creating content, not just for teachers or to show, here's how I have everything set up, but they're using this to create content for students and families. And the great thing is you can automatically download it from Sydney even before it hits your workspace and you can upload it to wherever you're uploading that content for your students and your families. And it's so much faster because when you're recording with Sydney, it is processing and web optimizing that as it's recording. So um, we're doing a lot of the heavy lifting and then you also have these great cropping features as well. Yep. So um, yep. just like in any video inside Sydney that you either create or upload to Sydney, you're able to trim that and you know cut off the edges where you're maybe setting the camera up and getting to your spot or wherever you're going. So yep. yeah. 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 I think, you know, I think the thing that's, that's nice about this one is that, you know, it's, it, it you know, for the good or bad of it, it is, is really basic and, you know, you get into screencastify and there's so many options and there's so many things you can do and you can get, kind of get overwhelmed a little bit. And here it's really just, you turn it on, you, you hit, you know, start with camera. I choose my, my location of where I want to go. Um, and then the new feature that I was talking about, we got the share audio button down here now. Yes, that's the new really one. Key. That one's really key because if you're going to show a video or you are going to do a Zoom call and you want that you want that audio from the application that you're using, you know, you need to be able to share the audio so it comes out nice and loud um, within your video. Um, so I can choose the share audio, but I choose my where I want to record from. You know, here's my list of all. Yeah, and I've got way too many, but all my <laughs> tabs. Know. You know, so I can pick which tab I want to go to or I can do the entire screen. Um, we really recommend for that Zoom call if you're doing that. Um, and we know a lot of our teacher prep programs um, or you're 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 doing a, a, a teacher walkthrough digitally from remote and you don't want to be in the Zoom, but you want to watch the entire screen is the way to go. You load in your your Zoom, but you're not part of it and you can watch it here. Um, and that share audio then becomes really important. Um, and as you said, it just dumps right into your workspace um, yeah. and then you can duplicate it. You can trim it. You can cut it into pieces. Um, you know, we're hearing, you know, teachers are doing like on the iPads or the, the Chrome tabs or on your phone. They want to show people how to use the, the Seesaw app or the Schoology app. That's the way this thing can really work on the mobile is it really can work very powerfully showing people how to do things on 
their devices. Um, yeah, so many. Really cool. Yeah, so many families are accessing their LM, the LMS from a mobile device or a, a tablet device, and it looks different than on the web. Just like just our ours has the same, a lot of the same features and spaces, but they're organized differently for that smaller screen. And so, being able to do that, I think, is powerful. We've got. Kelly Pittman, one of our, our Sydney virtual coaches says, yes, the screen recording feature is great. I've used it to highlight resources and sharing when uh, with teachers. Uh, and I've seen some of the videos that she's created. What I love is when you go to record with your camera, you can move that camera around uh, mm -hmm. to, you know, so that that window, if you're recording with your camera is in the right spot. Uh, and right. Kyle, you've talked a lot with the leadership teams who are doing what we like to call Zoom throughs, right? And they are uh, doing these virtual walkthroughs and they're using this feature. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So we're doing, so talking to a lot of leaders who are doing those Zoom throughs and um, and what they're really finding is that they have, they have some teachers who are doing, you know, are great with classroom engagement, especially with online, but then they have some that are not. So how can we replicate that? And, and, and keep that going within our classroom. And, and the screen record share is just a great way to do so. Um, or even when they wanna come in, we know that sometimes it's having their face, you know, pop in the students, the students act a little bit, they act a little bit different, right? So if you wanna get that real time, you know, engagement with the teachers and the students interaction, you just have those, those teachers just screen record and immediately send that uh, to those leaders and have that more in, thorough conversations of, you know, how they can, they can get better or some great things they're actually doing. And, and I actually want to touch on on what you know Jeff and Corey, which you, which you mentioned as far as um, you know them recording on on their screen on their mobile. You can also share that into the best practice video library too, mm -hmm. as well. So there's a lot of different varieties of ways you can actually use this feature, um, and a lot of folks have been excited about it. Just the conversations that we had um, within these last last few months, especially with this uh, you know this hybrid online learning. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it's definitely been a really timely feature for a lot of our our, our teachers who are accessing Sydney. Teachers are accessing Sydney more on the web platform than they have in the past because their work is right there on their laptop or their desktop because that's where their students are. And so to have a tool that you can use to create content to share with colleagues, maybe for feedback or to say, here's the, the flipped lesson I created. Feel free to share it or, you know, see what I did and make your own um, or to download that and then upload it to the students and families. I think that's a, a really powerful tool. And again, it just saves you time because mm -hmm. it's already processed and web optimized. So that's, right. that's, that's my favorite part of it. Yep. Uh, before this, I would open up a Zoom room just by myself and I'd record my screen and then I'd up, I'd download it and then upload it to Sydney. And you know, it just took a while because those files are large and I had to wait for Zoom to finish processing. With this, mm -hmm. it's just immediate. Yep. So yep. Not, not only yeah. that, if you're downloading off of other platforms, it's, you know, it's another step that you that you have to you know go through. And then especially when you're downloading those I, I've experienced this downloading files off my recordings off zoom sometimes I download the wrong file you know if you want to show everyone you know this is the way to do it you know it really make it easier um, for those users who are using it to um, really maximize the results in, in your in your classrooms yeah, yeah definitely yeah. definitely so, so well, are we gonna are we gonna give them the sneak peek I was just gonna say we've got one final yeah. Yeah. piece so a quick uh, sneak peek this uh, is this is something that is in it's in um, what we call quality assurance. It's in our testing um, uh, group um, on a test server. So this is a, an early preview, but but we've been talking about wanting to do live screen recording. Um, and so uh, what I've got is I've got open right now on our test server, I've got a huddle open. Um, and if you notice under huddle, you know, we have our live stream and you can record, like I said, you can record your screen straight into a huddle if you wanted to. But now if I go to live stream, and I go live, um, I'm gonna have the option to start my share screen. It's that easy. So now I can click that, I can pick my source that I wanna share into my live stream, and then I can share my audio. Um, and this is great because this is like mimicking those webinars, the, the yeah. Zoom webinars where I wanna show people uh, you know, how I'm, I'm, I'm broadcasting even something like this where we're broadcasting out. Um, you know, the, the reason we use 
you know, this stream right is because we need multiple people with multiple inputs. But if I wanted to just show something to my entire faculty um, and have a have a, a, a presentation, I can do this through live stream and I can record it and share my screen, which is great. So um, that is an early preview of what's coming. We're hopefully going to have that in a few weeks. And um, mm -hmm. it'll be really nice to take the two the two pieces that we really felt needed to come together during this this really weird pandemic you know what are we going to do are we going to be in classroom are we going to be home are we going to be you know blended what are we doing and now we've given you all the tools that you need to be able to do it in one 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 place at sydney yeah 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 and i love you know we've got a lot of our folks who are loving the ability to go live in a huddle um, even if they know that most of their teachers are in class sessions right now they're not able to view it there's just something about a live stream that makes it feel more authentic and more timely um, and you know it's you're live it is this is why we love doing the live shows here if we don't do it live then there's usually something we want to go back and we want to mm -hmm. edit and and mm -hmm. you know if you're going live and you don't want to keep that video you can discard the video mm -hmm. but um, the ability to be able to share your screen, you really could use this to facilitate a webinar type professional learning experience where everyone logs into the huddle, they're able to view the speaker, view the speaker's screen, type comments right there as they're watching it live. That speaker can see those comments and respond to those. It's just like kind of like that Zoom webinar where you can't hear your participants or see your participants, but you can see that they're there, see their names, see their comments. Yep. So yeah. I'm excited about that feature. Yeah. Because I one, usually have one. something I want to show whenever I go live in huddles. Right. So. Right. And that's and that's the thing that that we we get that complement of completion of we want to share something and do a live stream. Mm -hmm. And that we've got both. So um, yeah. we're really excited about that. We're really um, you know, it's like I said, we're we're testing it right now and um, hopefully it will be out very soon. So I'm excited. It's gonna change for, my workflow with my virtual that's exactly right. cohorts. In time yeah. for Black Friday, we you know, <laughs> there you go. and you're gonna be able to to do both. So, that's so right. gonna, yeah, that's the fun thing. So yeah, Brian was mentioning me as you know, the, the Sydney Santa Claus bringing all the hey, you know what? I was just getting ready to say that, Jeff. I'll say he's making a list, the customer list, he's making a list and then checking it Check twice. It there right. you go. We're oh, gonna log, log on to sit me, and we're gonna make everything nice. Okay. That's exactly there we right. go. <laughs> That's right. I'm right. I love that. Make there we go. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for coming and sharing. Just that again, that share audio, I think, was the big thing many of our folks were. Mm -hmm. looking at and interested in. And so uh, that is huge for us. And then also really just kind of thinking about the uh, this new sneak peek that you just announced. Yep. I think that's going to be amazing. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Jeff. Thanks uh, for having me, guys. We'll Appreciate have you it. back in December just so you can, you know, be Mr. Claus one more time. There we go. There we go. Share all the updates. There we go. There we go. So, <laughs> all thanks, right. Guys. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, so I want to, uh, you've got some exciting news, Kyle. We want to celebrate one of our one of our customers for some awesome achievements. So who are we shouting out today? We are shouting out the team at Goodman Elementary in Fort Bend ISD, Dr. Bolden and her instructional team. Uh, they're, they're really uh, doing a fantastic job. And it really, despite all the hurdles that was put against them throughout this year, uh, we, she, she, Dr. Bolden is going to be presenting at the uh, ESEA conference 2000 uh, this year, 2021, um, and she was actually selected out of uh, about about 100 sessions. There was eight selected, focused on Title One, and she was and she was she was selected out of that group. So out of 100 something sessions, she was selected out of eight, um, and wow. that is that is very powerful for the gains that she was making. Focused on teacher leadership. Um, with it, of course, utilizing the Simi app, but that doesn't come with just, but having a great team as well. So you can definitely mm -hmm. give a shout out to her and her team. We were excited about Dr. Bolden. Um, she's She's been uh, a great uh, partner, a great growth partner with, with Simi here. Yeah, yeah. It's so much more than the technology that we offer here at Simi. It really, it's a compliment to the culture that many schools want to create and sustain. And so uh, I love that they are definitely an example at Goodman Elementary of a campus who has done just that. So congratulations. Uh -huh.
Definitely. Well, I have a couple of announcements I want to make as we wrap up. If you are a campus who is has classrooms implementing the concurrent hybrid model, that's where a teacher is teaching a group of students in person and simultaneously teaching online students. So she's got students at home and students in person teaching at the same time. And he's trying to manage that. If you have that happening, I want to invite you, give you a personal invitation to join me live this Friday on the Coach Replay Show. I have Dr. Catlin Tucker. I have been following her work for years, y'all. Um, her book was the anchor text that I, many books that she's written, the anchor text I've been using when I talk with teachers in schools about implementing blended learning into their classroom. I've been keeping up with her blog. She's had so many great articles relevant to tackling some of the big hurdles that are in the way right now with remote instruction and hybrid instruction. Great, great sound advice. So join us this Friday. She's going to be on and talking about some ways that we can make this very complex model, the hybrid model work. So if you are a teacher or a leader or you are a friend of somebody who's doing that, make sure that they tune in. You can always watch it on demand as well. So check that out. Um, and then if you liked today's episode where we had Jeff come on and talk us specifically about a feature, if you're a Sydney user or if you're considering and you're wanting to see all the features, make sure you are subscribed to our Facebook or Twitter pages, LinkedIn, anywhere you find us on social media and tune in Fridays. We always put up a post now every Friday called Feature Friday, where we are doing just a quick, short video highlighting a specific feature inside Sydney. So be sure to check those bite-sized tips and uses for the Sydney web and mobile app features with our, our Feature Friday. Our team does an amazing job creating that content. Really great ones to use to kind of up your game just a little bit within Sydney. Okay. Definitely. Definitely. All that's right. very exciting at Feature Friday. Yeah. Quick, quick glimpse into it. And that's what everyone wants to see, a little quick, a quick sneak peek. There's some great things that we're doing. This and a great way to do though. But make sure, y'all, that you for one, like Corey said, make sure you like, subscribe uh to our channel on YouTube, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Uh, we we're always looking to expand the Sydney community. So if you like the content that you see here on What's Up Wednesdays, on Coach Replays on Friday, please like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family about, about Sydney. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, Kyle, thanks so much for joining me and being my co-host today. Uh, it's always fun. I, I want to highlight Brian. Brian's watching. He's not on the show today, but he is watching. And he said, hashtag Sydney Santa. There we go. Uh, so I love that. I love that. <laughs> Jeff is definitely that this year. Um, all right. Well, folks, join us next Wednesday. We have the learning loop. Allison Rodman is joining us to talk a little bit about how she's used Sydney and her consulting work to support leaders across the states. Um, so she's joining us and then we'll take a little hiatus for the Thanksgiving break. So um, make sure you tune in next week and we will all see you all Friday. Hopefully join me for the Coach Replay Show. All right. Bye everyone. Bye-bye. Awesome.